All right, so in this one, I'm going to show you how to easily create these patterns here, these circular holes using geometry nodes. If all the holes were the same size, it would be a little easier. But when there are some holes that are smaller than others, sort of falling off like a gradient, then that's when it becomes a little difficult to model. So I'll show you how to do that simply using geometry nodes. All right, so let me show you the concept and then you'll know you'll be able to apply it to your products. So I have a plane and I have an empty. All right, and we'll be using that empty afterwards. Let me just hide it for now. So we have this plane and we're gonna tap into edit mode and right click and just subdivide it a few times. I'm pressing shift R to repeat what I did, all right? So that should be enough for now. Let me do it one more time. Yes, all right? And so what will happen is that the holes would be in each of those squares. So then it would be beneficial for your object to be subdivided evenly if you want the holes to match. All right. And when I say match, I mean, if you want the holes to be round, that is step one. So let's go into geometry nodes now. So let's click here. Let's go into geometry nodes. And let me, let me close this down. We don't need this. All right. And click on new. All right. The first thing we're going to do, you know what? Let me tap out of edit mode and I'll turn on wireframe. All right. So I'll go up here and turn on wireframe. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to extrude this. And then we're going to scale in the extrusion. So press Shift A and add an extrude mesh operation. All right. So we just extruded it a bunch. So just turn it down. So that's it's basically just extruding, right? So turn this to zero. So right now we have an extruded mesh. So there's added geometry there. But look at what we're going to do to that. We're going to scale it. So now move this across and press Shift A and look for scale elements. Drop that there. Now, if we just move the scale, the slider, it's going to scale the whole thing. But we want to already scale these faces here individually so at the top of the faces. So for this to select that, we could plug this, the top, into the selection. And so now when we do that, you see, we scale it down. All right. So where we see those smaller squares, that's exactly where we're going to have the holes. So to do that, we're going to add a delete geometry. So shift A and add a delete geometry. And of course, when I drop that there, it's going to delete the whole thing. But we could bring that back. First of all, switch this from point to face. All right, because we wanted to delete not all faces, not all, sorry, but only faces. But which ones? Well, again, the same ones we selected. So uh, plug this top into the selection. That's what we'll get. All right. So, so far, so good. These are squares, but we want it to be circles. So usually you just we just add a nice subdivision surface and we get it round. So shift A and add a subdivision surface and drop that in here. You see that? So if we uh, up the levels, we get it more circular. Of course it will be more intense. So let me let me come out of wireframe so you see how nice that looks. So we already have our holes there. Really easy. Let me turn this turn this off. Press M to mute it. What we want to do now is to get a gradient all right so we don't want the, all the holes to be the same size so we could easily do that using a color ramp or even a map range but color ramp is a lot easier for beginners to understand so shift a another color ramp and we're going to plug this color ramp into the scale elements we, we we could already adjust the color ramp to see it scaling and we will also want to plug it into the selection of the extrude mesh this is where we bring in our empty because we want the empty now to affect the fall off so depending on how close or far it is then we should get a nice fall off uh, because the empty will be plugged into the gradient to the color ramp so let me click on this and make sure that i pin this node setup so even when i click on the empty we will move away from the our setup right so to do that easily we need to get the location of the empty so just bring the empty in here let's drag the empty on click on relative and we want to get the location and also shift a and add a position position node and remember we want it to be influenced by the distance so shift a and add a dis vector distance and we plug the location here and the position here and plug this into the factor see that now we want the reverse to happen so we could click on this drop down and flip color ramp and now when I move the empty, I'm pressing, you can just hold the empty, press G, move it about, all right? 
really nice and we could be able to use or we could use the color ram to increase the fall off so that's basically the concept right there and of course it's working really smoothly because i have this subdivision of when i enable this it gets a little laggy all right so let me turn this off for now so we actually see how it's working and that is basically the concept let me show you how it's applied to the object that you saw in the thumbnail so let me turn this off let me turn on the collection hide this lattice all right so this is the setup i had again i turned off the subdivision so that you could see and what you saw earlier i just animated it so that you could see it moving up and down all right you see the holes i wonder if i could you see it better here maybe so when i press play see that and i know if i take that empty and i just say i just want that on the side i just move it across here and i only get the holes on the side there and then i can even adjust this here as well wrong one sorry yes i could even adjust i actually have a map range set up with this one so i can adjust it here all right simple and note something as well too now if i move it to the top you see how the holes get a bit funny Does, doesn't look as nice it's just what i mentioned earlier because if i if you look at the wireframe here you notice that it's not it's not even squares like the rest and that's why it's like that all right so if you want it to be like that just make sure that the mesh has nice even subdivision it will work really nice all right so i wanted to show you this really quickly just so easily you could use this powerful setup to create some nice patterns on your products by the way if you're interested in product lighting I have some training on that. It's called 3D Product Lighting Mastery, where you will learn the three pillars of lighting. And with that foundational knowledge, you'll be able to recreate really professional looking product lighting, just like what you saw in the thumbnail of this video. All right, so if you want to check that out, I'll leave a link in the description. In the meanwhile, though, you might be interested in this next video where I talk about how to use one light to get professional results in product photography. So I'll see you in the next one.